Welcome to Electro Online, and now we have our 30th video of Maxwell's equations. And this is the last one. This is simply there to explain one more thing that some clever people came up with, and also to kind of summarize the whole thing right here. So here we have the four equations of Maxwell in integral form. So we're familiar with those. Here's uh, Gauss's law. This is Gauss's law for magnetic fields. This is Ampere's law, and this is Faraday's law. And so in the differential form, it's written like this, the divergence of E, the divergence of B, the curl of B, and the curl of E. Now, what they have done is they have made some different variables to represent the electric field and the magnetic field. For example, they came up with the D field. The D field is simply the electric field times the permittivity of free space. And if you then replace the E field by, by the D field, notice that um, e is equal to d divided by epsilon sub naught. So you put d divided by epsilon sub naught, epsilon sub naught cancel out, and you can now write the differential form of Gauss's law simply as the divergence of d is equal to the current density. It seems so elegant, so easy, so simple, but yet for me as a student it always confused me. Why did you come up with the d field? What is the d field? Well, the d field is just a different mathematical representation of the electric field, and it simply means electric field times epsilon sub naught. And by doing that, you can write Maxwell's first equation, Gauss's law, in differential form in a very simplistic form. Yes, it, it is indeed simplistic. It looks very simple. But I always like this because I'm familiar with this symbol and I'm familiar with that symbol. But it's just personal taste. So they did the same for the B field. In the B field, they said we could write the B field as mu sub naught times h. h, the h field, is just another way of representing the B field. It's actually better to represent it like this because then you can see that h is equal to this. It's simply the B field divided by mu sub naught. And so in the case of the second equation, the Gauss's law for magnetic fields, you can see that it doesn't matter which way you write it because it's always equal to zero. So if you replace B by uh, mu sub naught times h, and divide both sides by mu sub naught, you get this equation. So it's really the very same thing, just a different form, so you don't have to mess with mu sub naught, the permeability of free space. The next one is Ampere's law. And here you can see that, again, if you replace the B field by the H field, so H is B divided by mu sub naught. So if you write, uh, let's see if we do this right. So if you write H, H is B divided by mu sub naught. And if you do that, the mu sub naughts disappear. And if you replace the E sub naught, uh, the E field, by the D field, then the epsilon sub naught disappears. And now this equation is exactly the same as that equation, except without these constants right there. Again, it, it's personal taste. I personally don't like this form. I know it looks simpler and easier, but it doesn't help me understand what it means. And so therefore, I like to stick with the original form. I don't mind the mu sub naught and epsilon sub naught. I understand what B field is, I understand what electric field is, so I like this equation better. Now for the last one here, for Faraday's law, there was no point in changing it because it did not include, already from the start, the mu sub naught and epsilon sub naught, so we left it in the same form because that's as simple as we can possibly write it. So for those people who are really confused by the D field and the H field, don't be confused. They're simple, there's a simple mathematical conversion from one to the other, and you don't need to worry about it. So again, I would say, Ignore those, work with these, unless you really don't like to have it in this form, and then you can write it like that if you think that looks better for you. But it's a personal taste. There you go. These are the four equations of Maxwell, and if you don't understand what they mean, look at the previous 29 videos, and when you look at all of those, you probably have a pretty good idea what they mean and what they stand for.